Let's jump to this next story from ABC News because now we're going to start getting freaky. There were more toxic chemicals on the train that derailed in Ohio than originally reported data shows. This is from last night. So it may be, you know, it, it may be things that have already been reported that people finally figured out. Uh, ethyl hexyl a- uh, acrylate, a carcinogen, etc. I think we know about this. But now we got this from the Daily Mail. Don't tell me it's safe. Residents of East Palestine express fears about returning after it's revealed there were more toxic chemicals on derailed Ohio train than originally reported and thousands of livestock left dead. Yo, thousands of livestock. Let me see if I have this, uh, this video here. Let me see. Uh, where's that video? At? There we go. Check this one out. I'm going to play this, play this clip for you guys. And uh, the cage let's talk and about it. This, this is what I found. Amanda Brashears was going to feed her five hens and rooster this morning when she discovered them all lifeless, practically in the same position, with no signs of a predator entering their enclosure. I'm beyond upset and quite panicked because this, they may be just chickens, but they're family. Brashears That's right. Says her ch- they're family. <laughs> this one, they, they crossed the line. They killed chickens? Damn them. Well, they weren't eating them. I mean, that's okay. But, uh, yo, here's what I think. I think this whole town is blanketed in a toxic stew. They can't see. And the chickens are literally the canary in the coal mine. And this lady in the video, she goes, if it can kill chickens now, imagine what will happen to us in 20 years. And I'm just like, 20 years? Lady, they're dead now. What's going to happen to you in a week? Here's what I think. They're chickens. They're low to the ground. The chemicals are raining down on everything and everyone. The chickens are outside. So the chemicals blanket everything. The chickens like to flat their little wings and dust up the air, breathe it in, and peck the ground eating, ingesting it, and dying. Humans aren't eating things off the ground. But this lady's walking around outside, wafting all that garbage up into the air, probably breathing it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we're looking at a few months and people are in the hospital with scarred lungs or whatever kind of damage, chemical burns, who knows? Mm -hmm. That's so cr- the idea of that. Like, if you if there's a a massive amount of of casualties coming in the next that pop up in the next couple months, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not even sure how to process that. I mean, the chickens are dead. Yeah. Well, and you just have to wait. You just have to wait to see if it happens. That must be the most terrifying thing about living in this area right now. It could be fine. It could definitely not be fine. At yo, least, yo, they said the air was safe. Yeah. They okay, also, the chickens are dead. That's not chickens the ground, dead, though. They're saying the air is safe. The air is safe, and they're not, they're not finding any chemical residue inside people's houses. But where are you finding it? Are you testing the outside well? Are you testing the ground? Are you testing the sidewalks? Like Water? They're, get, they're giving you a statistic that's easy to avoid. I mean, some places are saying they're seeing some detection. I think it was like Cincinnati's water department. Whoa. Um, but that it wasn't that big a deal. And they're, you know, I, I it's hard for me not to feel like a lot of regional agencies are being asked to suppress information or they're not able to test fast enough to get the accurate information out you, kind of through no fault of their own because they've never had to deal with anything like this. You guys remember the algal bloom in, uh, where was it, Superior or something? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then all of a sudden these cities on the, on the Great Lake had no water because the, the algal bloom toxifies the water. You can't drink it. And then within a 40 mile radius of these cities, there was no water. Mm-hmm. Everything was bought up. Everybody rushed to the grocery store and bought whatever bottled water they could. And then it was all gone. So people were forced to evacuate because there's there's no water to drink. The water was toxic. Yep. Yeah, no water. Yeah. Not not just. I mean, people go through what four gallons a day, something like that, as an average person. The person, I, th- I think, I think they're saying in emergency emergency situations, they're advising what is it like a gallon for three days? That's to drink. Emergency situations. Yeah, like for an rationing. emergency. Yeah, yeah. If you're rationing, but I think it's like a gallon a day. I think people go through a lot more water. Than yeah, that. like when, yeah. when it comes to like if you're bathing and, and stuff like that, it's like oh, dude, so, bathing's no question. Yeah. I mean, the average person's probably using like it's like four gallons a minute in the shower, right? Yeah, like some it's, ridiculous. Is amount. it really that much? I mean, I don't know for sure, but it's it's multiple gallons per minute. I'm pretty Bro, sure. think about this: how many gallons of water can your bathtub hold, and how long did it take to fill up your bathtub? Yeah, I mean, usually, usually they're like, I think they're like. 15 gallons or something like that? No way, no? dude. They're way more than 50 to 100, maybe? A gallons in a bathtub? No yeah. Way. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, have you ever, look, look up a 50-gallon drum. You ever see a 50-gallon drum? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, try taking a bath in one of those things. Good luck. I mean, bathtub might even be more than that. It just depends on your bathtub, I suppose. But yeah, they tell you like when a storm's coming to fill up your bathtub with water in the, in the event that something bad, like the pipes get busted up or something happens, you can't get access to water. Oh yeah, the 72 gallons of typical bathtub holds. All right. I see, there you go. Look at yeah, that. right in the middle, 50 to 100. The water is definitely the most dangerous game because this lady's talking about, you know, 
20 years or whatever. It doesn't matter because, like you said, she's coming home to dead chickens now. They're right there underneath all of it down. But if this stuff makes it into the water, I mean, look at West Virginia. Look at the amount of area that is affected by this. So if they might be facing some sort of health consequences in the next, what, six to eight months, who knows where places like Charleston and Huntington and Montegale County, my district, who knows what kind of problems we're going to have two years from now, three years from now? I think it's sooner than that. Take, I, take a look at this image. Me being generous. Stu Peters tweeted this out. He says, just to put this in perspective, the contaminated Ohio River is the largest tributary of the Mississippi River. You can see the Ohio River Basin, this whole area, man. So it's happening just up right here, this explosion. If all this stuff gets in the gets in the water, excuse me, it's spreading out over everything. Look how much of everything West Virginia. west of the Appalachians. Just, just, yeah, man. Yeah, that's your water. This so, is, look. This is a, a, big con, a big concern for us, and that's why yeah. I, the... Uh, the, the chief of staff came by today and said, do you want an update regularly from the West Virginia American water people? And I said, of course, because obviously I want to know as much information as I can get. I don't know how much they're going to be able to give me, but I talked to them once today. And of course, they said that it's fine. It's being tested. We have secondary source of water ready to go. But do you believe them? I want to. <laughs> well, yeah, of course, I, I, I want, want to. to. And it I might want be to. I also want to believe that, you know, they have my best interests. They want to help me stay and, and live longer, that they want to end wars and they believe war is bad. And uh, there's a lot of things I want to believe. Well, and it might be fine today, but as we know, water moves downward. So what about three days from now? What about next week? Right. And I yeah. think that the people that I spoke to, I don't think that there's anything malicious about them. They were, I think that they are working, doing the best that they can with the information that they've been given. But do I think that they have the whole picture? I mean, I wouldn't. If I had to guess, I would say no, because I mean, I, know, I, the government doesn't lie, right? What would happen if the word got out to, I mean, this is two thirds of West Virginia and not, not to mention, I mean, almost all of Ohio, but let, like, let's speaking from the perspective of West Virginia, like, what do you think people would do if the word got out that the water actually was contaminated and they couldn't drink it? Oh, it's, it's pandemonium. Pandemonium. It, it would be, it would be uh, saying a circus doesn't even do it justice because it would be way more aggressively violent. And it would have it just detrimental to to no end. You couldn't even quantify it. It's almost the whole state of Ohio, and yeah. like the state and of Ohio, West the Virginia, fifth, Tennessee, Kentucky. Well, Ohio is the fifth most populated state in the country. People, you know, like that. There's a lot of people in Ohio. Never mind the people in Tennessee, and and I mean, this isn't that one mile radius that we were just talking about in Arizona. This is entire states, effectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's the level, the level to people, you know, to the, the degree to which people need to be prepared is. I, I, I've tweeted this, you know, every so often that in the future we're going to look back and be shocked at the idea that we we would literally flush fresh water down the toilet, yeah, totally. like literally just waste it. There's going to come a time where it's going to be hard to source water. There's already issues with the Great Lakes where we've been depleting them, and then restrictions had to be put in place so that they could be replenished naturally and and maintain. Then you get other states, like I think it was Arizona that was suing, trying to take Great Lakes water, arguing that as part of the United States. We have access to all water sources. Wow. But the Great Lakes Coalition includes, I think, Ontario, Canada. So it's yeah. like it's an international treaty. You can't interfere with it. But taking a look now at the entirety of Ohio, I can only say I absolutely hope it really isn't that bad. But hope and a couple, uh, you know, five bucks will get you a cup of coffee. So if, if it were me and, and I was in the direct impact <coughs> uh, area of the Ohio River Basin, yo, I'd be, I'd be filling up. Maybe I'd maybe go buy like 10, 50 gallon drums and just fill them up, I'm not, seal them up. I'm not sure if my ignorance of how bad it actually is, would, it would be like considered bliss or is detrimental because it looks really terrible. But for for as much as I'm actually like educated about this kind of stuff, it could be actually no big deal. I don't know. It doesn't look good, though. I hope and it's no big all, deal. All the farmland. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hope it's no big deal. I hope everyone is totally fine. I hope those chickens just got really tired and went to sleep. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I think you should go get the water because yeah. worst comes to worst, you use it when the power goes out some other time or but, you have that resource on hand. My problem is just there is no way to know and it's hard to know that the only way we get through it is just by waiting to see what happens. We are now in a completely defensive position to this. And, and nobody I mean, trusts I don't, even, I don't even know if defensive is the right way to describe it. Uh, trucker and tourists in the super chat saying, "What about the food supply? There's thousands of acres of farmland." Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> We're reacting. We All that farmland. I don't know, man. That's my point, though. We only we are, only have the ability to react. We don't have any choice but to deal with the consequences, and that is how. How do you even prepare for something that could potentially be such a big scale? Like I said, I hope it's totally fine, but 
how could it be? They just burned a ton of chemicals into the atmosphere. Isn't this what environmentalists always say we should not do? Isn't isn't like the, the world basically blanketed in radioactive particulates because of all the nuclear bomb tests we did? Mm-hmm. There was something about that I was reading. Like, it's hard for us to date certain things because we just... Mm blanket the planet and yeah. we messed up nuclear fallout of some sort well that too we like, messed up yeah, no we yeah. messed it up sorry i misspoke no i mean yeah. we did mess up no, i agree for sure that's why we have to use like surgical steel coming from like world war ii ships and everything yep. yeah because it doesn't have the background radiation inside of it so like new steel harvested or like refined today is going to be radioactive is that what it is uh i think so that's why we literally go down and find those old ships because it's been kept underneath the water and thus isolated wow. from all that particular that's why i understand can't we like de-radioactive it or something somehow like we're humans <laughs> no we're pretty smart we can figure that out can't we no idea i have no idea thanks for watching this clip from the timcast irl podcast hang out with us live monday through friday at 8 p.m and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.